sunny day in Pekanikis Park. Three college students are soon to make a startling discovery. Hey guys, come down here. I think I found something. What is it, Nick? I, I don't know. All right, we're coming down to see. What they will soon find is sure to surprise them. I'm getting it. It's really in there. What? What is this? Huh. I don't know. Hey, look, take a look at this. Maybe we can wash the dirt off and figure out what it is. I think it's some kind of fossil. Hmm. A fossil indeed. Hmm, I actually, I think I've seen this before. Yeah, the anatomy kind of looks like, what's that creature we learned about? A t tick, t t tick. What, what, did, what was Professor saying in class? I don't know. Tick Tick Yeah, this does look With the miraculous discovery of Tick these students ask a question begging to be answered. Where do our fingers come from? And how did they evolve? The answer lies in the evolution of fingers. If we want to answer this question, we need to go back in time, 375 million years ago, to the Devonian time period. This is where we can find an interesting creature swimming in freshwater streams named Tiktaalik. This transitional species gives us clues to how our fingers evolved. This was a crucial time period for the evolution of our fingers. Most of life on Earth was still swimming in the ocean, but this is where we see the transition onto land. In 2004, Dr. Neil Shubin discovered a tetrapod in northern Canada. A tetrapod is any four-legged vertebrae animal. His team found a fossilized freshwater fish with anatomical evidence proving it was a link between the land and the sea. This creature was named Tiktaalik. According to a paper published in Nature by Edward B. Deichler, Tiktaalik shared features with fish and tetrapods. The creature had gills and fins, but also had limb bones and ribs associated with breathing on land. A gene found in Tiktaalik 375 million years ago was passed down to many different species that evolved with variations on their original limb pattern. Another fossil was discovered by Jennifer Clack in 1971. The fossil was a new species called Viderpes. This fossil linked creatures like Tiktaalik with reptiles, amphibians, and mammals. Viderpes had forward-facing feet and five toes. The skeletal morphology in Pederpes included many bones seen in humans and their ancestors today. According to the Smithsonian Institution Human Origin Program, an interesting hominid named Artipithecus ramidus was one of the earliest known hominids to walk on two feet, an important step in human evolution called bipedalism. A. ramidus had hands and fingers similar to ours that were specialized for climbing. About a million years later, a new primate species emerged called Kenyanthropus paltiops. This early form of human was the first creature to use their hands to make useful tools. The fine motor skills they developed helped shape our fingers today. The discovery of the early hominid fossil, Zingenthropus by L.S.B. Leakey, brought indications that the use of modern hands had earlier origins than previously thought. The fossil was dated to be one million years old. Tools were found at the fossil indicating the continued use of tools after Kenyanthropus. The further advancement of tools pushed the evolution of our fingers forward. While scientists throughout the world were busy uncovering the anatomical clues of how our fingers evolved, another group of scientists were working on a genetic link. A paper published to Science Direct by Paul J. Schertz explained the connection between our fingers and a gene called Sonic Hedgehog. Sonic Hedgehog is a gene in the SHH pathway that has many functions in many different species. A team at Harvard Medical School isolated the gene and started testing it on chick embryos. They found that the gene was responsible for the early development of our fingers. The team experimented with the strength of the gene, and when the strength was increased, the number of digits in the chick embryos also increased. The same gene is implicated in a condition called polydactyly in humans. 
According to a paper by Lang et al., polydactyly has been actively studied for centuries and is a useful tool for studying evolution in mammals, as well as gene regulation and digit pattern formations. Polydactylous fingers are often fully developed, as we can see compared to a normally developed five-fingered hand. Polydactyly is evidence of the ever-changing human genome. Who knows where evolution will take us next?